Hello, hello lovely souls and welcome to the channel. This is Lunar Goddess Tarot. So I did take the weekend off and I wanted to come back here with a short video for the Divine Feminine Empowerment Series. This is specifically for the Divine Feminines. There is so much happening right now in the collective and there's going to be a lot happening this month leading up into next month. If you guys want more intel, more insight, come over to my Patreon for more in-depth um, posts. I do a lot of written readings over on Patreon because I personally think that those are more informational, more educational, and I can pack a, a bigger punch with them. So that's the reason why I do so many written readings. Um, in addition, I love I love the written word. I think it's it's, for me, it's the way that I best express myself. So I also do some, I will do some videos over there, but they're usually in the form of written readings as well. Um, I haven't done a video reading over there in a while, just because, again, I feel like I can express myself and pack more punch and get more information out with the written word versus the spoken word, especially right now with Mercury in retrograde. So I will be doing a post sometime this week. I'm not sure exactly when, but be on the lookout for that, guys. There's three different tiers that you can subscribe to, so you can choose which one suits you best. And um, please know that the majority of my posts are on all access and VIP. Um, the, the lower level is really just to support the channel. And I do post, um, you know, from time to time for that level, but definitely not as much as the other level. So um, I am going to do a short reading here, as I said, for the Divine Feminine, because there's just a lot going on right now. And I'll try to do a longer one later today or tomorrow, but I did want to catch you guys up with what's going on. Very quickly, if you guys are interested in having one-on-one -on -one healing and coaching guidance sessions, you can reach me at my either the email that's below or you can reach me at uh, the website and you can book sessions with Holly and myself. We're offering both abundance sessions and we're also offering sessions for your twin flame connection, okay? But we're really, really wanting... Um, to focus on the abundance for the divine feminine or the divine masculine at this time. We really want to really drive that home because it's very important with what's going to come here in the next several months, what's going to ensue. So, all right, so we're excited to introduce those. We've been working with a lot of you guys. We're very excited and we are definitely, definitely in preparatory mode right now, guys, as a collective. So our goal is to get you to a place where you feel very confident in your your gifts, very confident in, um, you know, healing that root chakra where you may feel as though you um, are not enough or that you are too much and healing just those wounds that are keeping us held back on our journeys because we're all meant to shine at this time and we're all very much needed on the planet at this time as light workers, star seeds, twin souls, and soulmates. So let's dive right in uh, to the, the reading here because I really only have about 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and ask that this reading be blessed and ask that Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael in particular are present for this reading. <clears throat> Please create a violet white light around this reading of protection for anyone watching at any time and also around myself and all of our counterparts. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and so it is. Okay, so a lot of you may have felt sort of, yeah, the death card. I knew that was going to come out. Um, a lot of you may have felt Ace of Swords, Death card, the Hermit. So two major Arcanas out of four and the Eight of Cups. So the overarching energy, guys, of this weekend was a lot of introspection, okay? A lot of going within, um, a lot of kind of feeling like you're crawling out of your skin and feeling as though you you couldn't, you were restless, you couldn't be satiated, you couldn't, um, like nothing was working to quell that restlessness it's just kind of this this energy that was pervasive throughout the collector this re weekend and it's one of the reasons I wasn't able to do readings there was no way I was going to even attempt to tap into the collective energy with what was going on so divine feminine there are reasons for this but I'm not going to go into the divine masculine's energies for this reading this is especially for you but you were definitely picking up on the collective you were definitely picking up on the counterparts energies and um, also this was some of your energies as we really cleanse and clear out those last elements um, of really of the past, you know, several years, going back to even 2017. Um, but also as you guys know in my readings that I've stated, 2019 to present are very important years as well. And we've been cleansing and clearing out a lot from those years. 
So um, we are wrapping up this cycle and as we do so, a lot of the old stuff is coming to the surface. It's kind of like it's asking us, do you really want, like are you really sure that you want to move forward? Are you really sure that this is cleansed and cleared? And when that happens, it can feel, like I said, very restless, very, can feel very uncertain. Um, it can just feel like something big is happening. It feels like this, in, this inevitable shift or change. You just feel the undercurrent. It feels like it's electric, okay? There's an electrical current that's running right now that tells us something is going to change and that we are leaving something behind. So a lot of you are in hermit mode. And this is because Libra... Libra energy can kind of take you into that place as you balance out the skills in your life and as you come into inner union. So a lot more people are going to be coming into inner union now. For my Scorpios out there, as you guys know, I'm a Scorpio sun in Venus. So for my Scorps out there, Scorpio suns, what you're finding, okay, that this energy of Libra sits in your 12th house. It's a 12th house of endings. It's a 12th house of karmic, um, it's like karmic collapses, you know, or karmic um retribution it's things coming around full circle it's that that world card in the major arcana where you are ending a cycle to begin a new one so yeah you need some time for introspection and reflection and going within and it might have been very challenging um especially for scorps and it's going to be throughout this you know it's a very dreamy sleepy energy for scorpios in particular if you're a libra for instance this is your first house okay and libra energy this is going to feel very much like you're inspired like you're alive like it's the opposite of what scorps are feeling okay so we also have the death energy and this is to you know this is a scorpionic energy so this is the energy to really ignite the flame Okay, it's igniting the flame within by putting to bed or putting to death that which we cannot take with us. And feminines, I can't stress how important this is. And again, I'm going to go into more detail as much as I'm able to over on Patreon because there's certain things that I can share. There's certain things that I really can't share yet. Um, but what is happening is this very transformative. It's a moth-like energy. Like there's something that needs to die. There's something that needs to go in order for something else to be reborn. This is also the energy of 13, which which is an auspicious number, even though some people think it's very, um, you know, it's a scary number. It's a lucky number for a lot of us. And it does signal the energy of rebirth, okay? It's the energy of wiping off the cobweb and or coming out of the cobweb and breaking free if you will there's definitely a metamorphosis happening right now in the collective in your connections um, a lot of you are feeling like it's going back to the beginning so you're going to get that feeling like the longing feeling has come back for a lot of people over the weekend um, and you're lost in your head the ace of swords you're kind of lost in your mind lost in your thoughts and it may be challenging for you to separate from your mind or separate from your ego at this time as we let go as things end the ego wants to hold on so this is very very um challenging energy that we walked through this weekend and even last week um and so a lot of you will be experiencing um you know since we're still in mercury retrograde and we still have a lot of planets retrograde we're going to be experiencing still this kind of stillness and heaviness and introspective energy but these planets are going to start to shift forward this month actually i think jupiter and saturn both shift forward pluto shifts forward mercury will shift forward and we're going to have mars a brand new mars energy that's going to activate i believe it's on mars moves into scorpio on october 30th and so that's a brand new almost explosive energy that's going to affect aries and scorpios the most because you're both ruled by mars so if you have a strong presence or a strong placement rather in aries or scorpio like north node um sun sign rising sign you're going to feel this even your mars if your mars is an aries or scorpio you're definitely going to be feeling this energy but we're all going to be feeling a renewed sense of energy as we get sort of this this old mars is being replaced by this brand new fresh energy it's a fresh energy but mars is the god of war so we have to be careful with our tempers we have to be careful with our intentions we have to be careful with the way in which we communicate and we just want to be mindful because there's just so much tension right now that's going on in the collective. There really is. There's a lot of tension, guys. And um, 
you know, you'll, you, you will have felt it this weekend. I think you're going to continue to feel it through much of October, but we will get a relief and a break in November, and we will be in Scorpio season then. We will be completing that transformative cycle. So I wanted to know here, I have a brand new deck, and this is, um, got actually two decks from Amy Herrera. Amy, thank you so much for these beautiful decks. I haven't used the tarot deck yet, but I will, but I did want to go ahead and introduce this beautiful goddess deck. So this is goddess, the goddess Isis, and then we have the triple goddess. So really beautiful. That's connected to the lion energy. So the triple goddess is the original trinity, okay? The... The triple goddess symbolizes the three faces of the great goddess and is the earliest representation of her division into multiplicity. The triple goddess is intimately associated with the changing faces of the moon. Just as the moon transforms from one face to another, the great goddess moves along among her many roles. Her three faces are virgin, mother, and crone. Virgin representing the strong, self-defined goddess, mother representing the nurturing goddess as source of all nourishment, and crone representing the goddess of death and transformation. So there we go. We have death and transformation coming twice in this reading. Wow. The symbolism embraces the role of the goddess in all phases of existence, from birth through death to rebirth. Yep. The triple function the triple goddess reminds us of our sacredness regardless of our age or function in life she reminds us that despite her many forms there is one goddess always present and always sacred that's really beautiful i really really like these cards and then isis and osiris so isis osiris was actually her brother that she fell in love with and she married and um so isis was murdered twice and she she came and I think she revitalized him the first time. Yeah, she revived him and then they had a son horse and then he was killed again by his brother Set. And at that point, um, she wasn't able to revive him. But what she did is she located all of his pieces and she gave him a proper burial. So Isis represents um, the feminine, the divine feminine, right? Total femininity. Um, she can overcome death itself but she is not above grief it says so this is interesting we have this definitely this energy the eight of cups the death energy the death energy coming here with a triple goddess right death and rebirth and the death energy again so death is a pervasive um energy right now going through the collective as parts and pieces of us die as parts and pieces of us die we have no choice but to be reborn and this can feel heavy, guys. It can feel sad. It can feel intense. It can feel lonely. It can feel isolating. So this is why I wanted to do this reading to help give you guys, I know it's a shorter reading, but to help give you guys an idea of what is actually going on in the collective and why we're feeling this way because it feels heavy and it feels very much like, have I gone backwards? Have I, you know, have I risked it all for nothing or have I lost all the progress I've made? Has it really counted for anything? Um, but, you know, understand that it's a choice, this Eight of Cups, to walk away from that which isn't serving us. Even if it doesn't feel like it, it is a choice that the soul is making, whether the human self is making it or not. But this death energy is coming through really, really solidly and really fast. And so you want to embrace these energies. You can call on the Triple Goddess. You can call on... Um, you know, the virgin, the mother goddess, or the crone for this energy to help you rebirth when the time is right in Scorpio season. And then also, <clears throat> you know, next month in Scorpio season, and you can call on Isis here to help you move through any, any death that you're experiencing, death of self, death of ego, death of, you know, the life that you thought you were going to live, okay? There's a lot of kind of regret and mourning energy that's also leading to anger in the collective right now. Very, very, very intense energies, guys. Intense emotions. <clears throat> so I only have a few more minutes here, unfortunately. But I am going to pull a card here from the integration deck. Can we have a card here for the Divine Feminine, please? Can we have a card here for the Divine Feminine? Working on the solar plexus, working on um, stepping into your personal power, 
Um, also look direction, yeah, direction 3B and 3C, the different levels or layers of the solar plexus are coming in here. Um, I do feel like, you know, feminine, you're gaining a sense of divine direction at this time. But again, you have to go through and allow this hermit energy <coughs> to really kind of permeate your experience. Don't try to rush through this energy of death or this energy of hermit energy or even the eight of cups. You have to feel all of this in order to really move forward. So feminine, I do think that there's a lot that's shifting and there's there's going to you're going to be asked to really speak and live your truth here. Um, I see like a hunter energy here with this direction card. It's like I don't see the a compass. I see that it's like he's hunting for something or she's hunting for something and she's going to find it. And she doesn't need anything outside of herself to point her in the direction of her soul's will or her soul's purpose. So this is about destiny. This is about you stepping into that place of with or without my counterpart, I am going to reach my destiny. I am going to step into my power and I'm no longer going to hold myself back. There's a real openness here as you heal that solar plexus. So Guys, stay tuned for more in-depth, a more in-depth reading. Um, I hope to be able to do that later today or even tomorrow. Take care, guys. It's been a very, very challenging weekend, so I send you guys lots of love and support, and I will be back soon with another video to guide and to assist.